Okay, we're going to carry on. Um, Thomas is going to talk to us about the pitfalls of measuring network storage. Well, can you hear me? All right, fine. Okay, I'm from One and One. And uh, probably you know that One and One is one of the largest uh, web uh, providers in Europe, if not the largest. And uh, you can imagine if you have several ten thousands of servers, uh, almost approaching the range of one hundred thousand, then uh, it matters uh, which hardware do you buy. Uh, in particular, storage hardware. So this talk is uh, going about um, yeah, commercial versus, versus open source. Commercial is clear, there are a number of vendors I will not name in this talk uh, and you will see why I will not name uh, later. And open source in this context means that you have a Linux stack and software and of course the hardware remains and you need some hardware. And this is not open source of course. Uh, usually uh, I'm comparing against a uh, RAID controller, which is like hardware, also it has a firmware on it. Okay, I start with uh, what's uh, the main difference between block replay and uh, usual tools. And then I come to the main point of this uh, talk, uh, artificial benchmarks and real life benchmarks which try to approximate the real-life behavior of applications and that can make a difference and I'll show you some example. It can be drastical differences. And um, well, I have one pitfall in, uh, which I will try to address, but there are many more pitfalls. You can create fake results uh, which uh, will differ from real results by factors if not by orders of magnitude if you do the wrong things. So it's really, uh, most results on the internet are faked, I think. And I have reasons to believe that. I'll show you some of them. Okay? It's just um, a short introduction what I want to talk about. Okay. Um, block replay. Well, I, I created it as a byproduct. It's not, uh, I'm currently working on Mars. That's uh, asynchronous replication of the network, and this is just a byproduct. Um, and um, be because there's the problem that um, the usual benchmarks are artificial ones. And most of them are just overloading the system with random requests or whatever. So these are usually overloading, overloading um, benchmarks and just uh, looking what the system does with overload, overload. But overload is not the only situation you want to know for practice. In practice, most systems are not overloaded all the time, but only in some peak situations. Okay, and it's very interesting to look at the difference between normal operating mode and what's happening at peaks. So there can be a very, very large difference. So one of, uh, of, of uh, the things you can do with block replay is just look at the normal operating mode. Just replay in the laboratory what's happening in real life, in your real life systems. Okay, and that means uh, the positionally and timely behavior must be replayed and also the I.O. parallelism. It's very important that uh, you have the same degree of parallelism as in the lab as uh, you have in real life. And something which you, I haven't found in, in other tools is uh, automation. If you have large projects and want uh, to test several machines and uh, several loads uh, and do all that automatically, here's a test suite written in shell script and uh, with plugins you can in, in enhance it or whatever you, you want. Okay, and probably uh, the most interesting point for you could be the database of real life loads which have been measured at one and ones data centers from different application areas and some of our servers are loaded with 10,000 uh, of customers and others of course with less customers but uh, there were interesting properties in this load, you can look at it, it's published under GPL and similar licenses on blockreplay.org. That's on the only one thing you have to remember from this talk. Okay. Well, this is the first example. It's a random load, that means an artificial one. And it's ramping up. That means uh, it starts with one IOPS per second at second number one, two at second number two, and so on just increasing the load until at some point uh, the, the green line is uh, the demand, the demand IOPS and uh, the orange line is the true actual reaction of the system. 
Okay, still can you read it? So this is some expected behavior that uh, at some point the uh, performance will just uh, remain at, at some limit. Okay, and uh, about 800 IOPS. Do you think that's much or it's not good? What do you think? Well, the system is a RAID system with about uh, S8 term with about 50 spindles. And it's full random over the full disks. 50 spindles in parallel. It, it, it's not very good, yes? Okay, because storage renders are claiming very different numbers. That's the next slide. Okay, this is a commercial system and it's a whole other world, you think, or, or do you, don't you think? But if you look at the picture here, you will find something which is irritating. Are you irritated or not? Why isn't it stable? Why isn't it stable? So, um, okay, that's 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 IOPS in the peak, whatever. That seems to be, okay, it's a clear winner or not. Is it really won by the commercial system or not? What do you think? Okay, uh, I'll come to this. This is an artificial load. And now we turn to real benchmark for real world load. That means uh, we have a server. Uh, here the scenario is uh, 25 virtual machines, a SYN server in parallel uh, over ISCASI to one central storage box. Okay? 25 instances of local play in parallel. And uh, the load is from a natural one, but uh, we have selected the peaks. Okay, that's also a kind of overload scenario, but from the real life. Not exactly random, but of course with random parts of inside it. And uh, it's recorded by block trace, you probably know, it's already in the kernel, and there's some, already some tools around it. And, uh, okay, try it out. Uh, the block replay uses uh, classical threads, classical um, processes, not a uh, okay. Now what's the result? Okay, this is our first system, classical RAID. There's a Linux stack on it. And oh, the numbers are very different from our random I.O. What's happened here? Much higher. What do you think? Well, it's a property of the virtual machines. They are coalescing I.O. in some way, buffering in cache, and then you get much more sequential I.O., but not true sequential I.O. So, suddenly the S8 disks are better than you think, thought before. Yes, it's a property of the S8 disk. If I use other disks, for example, the enterprise grade, the very fast and expensive ones, there's a different behavior, a very different behavior. But, uh, okay, it's interesting. And now what's with the commercial system? It's less. Okay, this is the first striking example of what uh, artificial benchmarks versus um, real-life benchmarks. Okay, is it really the true performance of the commercial system? No. There's even another problem, not yet present here. That's the next slide. Uh, all, most commercial systems, and even some free ones, uh, have a special layer uh, which uh, deals with storage virtualization. Okay, and here's the basic principle how it works. You have, uh, for example, 50 terabytes just as an example, 50 spindles, each one terabyte. So, um, and in this address space you are loading this random uh, I.O., the first test we had. Okay, and this is translated to some physical address somewhere. And there are two strategies, the one is the pre-allocation and the one is allocation on demand at runtime. In this case here is allocation at runtime, and usually the allocation strat strategy is just uh, to allocate the next free block, so in sequence. And here you can see what happens. You are thinking you are benchmarking this random I.O., but in real in reality you have sequential I.O. So what do you get? You get fake results. 
you, in reality, you are not uh, benchmarking the random behavior of your system, you are just benchmarking uh, the, the effectiveness of the translation layer, the throughput of this layer. This is completely wrong, okay, it's clear. And there's one countermeasure, just fill your logical volumes uh, with some random data, don't fill it with zero blocks, because some commercial black boxes, there are black boxes, might detect this and uh, maybe that they don't allocate anything. Maybe, it depends on the vendor. You can't see it. So just use random data and fill them. And uh, okay, the next slide is with the fill. The first slide was the commercial system without filling it. And now the next slide I will show you is without filling. What do you think? What's the difference? Okay, here is it. Okay, usually your customers will fill your logical volumes with data. Okay, which one is uh, the real? performance, this one or the former one? Well, in reality, it's something in between because it's not completely filled to 100%, okay, it's clear, but it will come more close to this here, the reality. Okay, the winner is clear now, and the price is also clear. The commercial system is more expensive than if you build your own great system. When, well, and if you have several thousands of instances, uh, then it's clear what, what it makes in money. Several billions, maybe. Millions at least. Not, not billions, sorry. <coughs> okay, this is uh, the headline of my talk, the, the bottom line. And uh, this is just one of my last slides. Well, chances for open source stacks. This is uh, the main discussion point here. Uh, one, of, um, one of the stri strengths of the commercial systems is um, they are dealing with big companies and this is the main problem for open source solutions. Uh, they typically cannot compete in that area of manpower, of, uh, of support and of uh, company size. Okay. Um, but uh, there's a chance if you find out the truth, I've written it in capital there, the truth is very different from, uh, from advertising and from what salespeople are claiming. In some cases, not in any cases. But finding out the truth is something you have to do as a sysadmin. So just use the right tools and use the right methods to find out what is really going on and you can save much money, a lot of money. Um, okay, and the next step is then your management if you are working in a larger com company. Then typically they are believing the salesperson, not you. So produce results on paper and show them what's really the truth and tell them why these results are correct and the others are not correct. So this is my last slide. We have time. Yes? Okay. Well, it's, this is the bottom line. Never trust any claim from anybody. <laughs> In particular, claims from sales, salespersons. Did you ever have to do with salespersons? Okay. <laughs> but not storage salesperson or also? Both. Both, okay. So you know what I'm talking about. Okay, it's, it's all clear. Uh, always check yourself. That's, the bottom line here is a tool which uh, hopefully will help you doing that. Thanks. Questions, okay. We are on time. Yes. Anyone? Well, uh, I just. Uh, um